I'd say that food price volatility is important for um, poor people who are spending, you know, large portions of their uh, expenditure on on food products. Um, if you're spending 50 to 80 percent of your in income on food, then uh, if the prices go up, you start to have problems. So for the poor and the near poor, I think it's uh, quite a big issue. You can, I suppose, separate it into producers of food and consumers of food and who's a net producer, who's a, a, a net consumer, but it gets very sort of uh, complicated then, I suppose. If someone's a, a net consumer of food, even if they are a producer, if the prices are going up and down there, they're going to be having problems. Um, even for net producers, it's not always clear you know, the terms of trade with what they're producing going up or down against the food. It's really not a question you can say, you know, this group is is going to do well and this group isn't, unless you really start looking into sort of m more detail, I think. There's sort of different kinds of volatility. You can have uh, more predictable volatility and or volatility caused by, you know, domestic uh, issues or volatility that's coming in from external factors, volatility that's caused by, you know, input prices or differences in transport prices or because, you know, actors aren't uh, appropriately connected to markets. Like, I think a lot of it depends on what the causes are. You sort of have to unpick the causes of volatility before you start looking at policy uh, prescriptions.